we're going to do exercise 9.7, cash budget analysis. A cash budget by quarter is given below for a retail company. The company requires a minimum cash balance of $5,000 to start each quarter. Required, fill in the missing amounts in the table that follow. Now you'll recall from the chapter that when we're doing the cash, uh, the cash budget, we cannot go across the rows. We must go down the columns. In other words, before we can even fill out quarter two, we must completely fill out quarter one because the ending cash balance at the bottom of quarter one becomes the beginning cash balance at the top of quarter two. So let's begin. We started with six. We end with 71. We have 71 available. So how much did we collect? <clears throat> 65. That's straightforward enough. We don't know what our selling and administrative expenses are, so we don't know our total disbursements, but we know we're short two. If we started with 71, if we had 71 available, and we're short two, we must have subtracted 73. And if we subtracted 73, it doesn't take much to go up here, do some subtraction, and figure out that that expense was 28. So we, we're short two. We need a minimum cash balance of five. So that means we need to borrow something. How do we get from negative two to positive five? We borrow seven, so our total borrowings are seven. There's quarter one. The five dollars at the end of quarter one becomes the five dollars at the beginning of quarter two. No idea how much we collected, so we don't know how much we have available, but we spent 85. We spent 85, we don't know if we have an excess or a deficiency, but look at this, we had to borrow 15. So we must have been short if we had to borrow 15. And if we had to borrow, we had to borrow enough to get us to a minimum balance of 5. So we must have been short 10. 10, then we borrow 15, that gets us to a positive 5, so our total borrowings are 15. Well, we spent 85, that puts us short 10. So that means we must have started from 75. 75 minus 85 is negative 10. If we had 5, we must have collected 70 from customers to get to 75. There's our second quarter. It starts to get a little tricky from here on in. Our beginning cash balance is 5. We collected 96, so we have 101 available. That was easy enough. I said it would be difficult, and it wasn't. We don't know what our purchases of inventory are, and we know, so we don't know what our total disbursements are, but we know we still end with $11. We have $11 left. Well, 11000 So if we started with 101000 and we have 11000 left, we must have spent 90 Well, 90 minus 2 minus 10 minus 30 means we spent 48 on inventory. So we have 11 we're in a position to pay back money because all we need to end with is 5. So how much can we pay back out of the 11? We can pay back 6. Uh, let's put that negative 6. We can pay back 6,000. So our total financing is negative 6,000. We end with 5. So we're learning something here that when we have excess cash and a minimum balance required, if our excess is greater than that minimum and we owe money, let's pay it. Let's pay it off. There's no sense in, in carrying $11,000 in our bank account when we could easily pay off $6,000 of our debt. Let's do that. So we have our $5,000 that we're ending quarter three with. That means we start quarter four with $5. We don't know how much we collected, so we don't know how much we have available, but we can start working with the total year now. For the year, we collected 323000 but we know what we collected in quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three. So simply by doing subtraction, we collected 92 in quarter four. That gives us 97 available. Before we leave here, look what we can do as well. For the beginning of the year, what did we start the year with? Well, we started the year with six. Cash balance at the beginning of the year was six, so we can fill that in. If we started with six and we collected 323, that gave us 329 available. Uh, we can add the four quarters of purchases of inventory. We have enough information for that now. That's 163. We're missing selling an administrative expense, but not really because we know it's total 113 and we have the first three quarters. So all we have to do is subtract 
that'll get us 25. We do the same thing here. We know it's 36 for the year, and we have the first three quarters. So if we fill that in, we will get 10. Notice that we have all four quarters of dividends, so we can fill in our eight over here. So our total disbursements, we just have to add them up. We get 72, and our total disbursements for the year, if we add them up, we get 320. Now remember, I said that you cannot go across the cells. You must work your way down. However, once you get to the fourth quarter, a lot of the um, full year amounts can be filled in right away. So we can work uh, in, both the, in both cells. Well, if we have 72, <clears throat> we collected 97, we spent 72, what does that give us? It gives us 25 excess. So now we can pay off the rest of our debt. It's 16. If we have 25 and we pay off 16, our total financing is negative 16, and it leaves us with 9 left. So let's continue on down here and see if we get the same number. Well, we have 329. Total disbursements, 320. That leaves us with an excess of 9. So excess of cash over disbursements is 9. We borrowed 22. We paid back 22, so our borrowings for the year are zero, so our ending cash balance is nine. Look how I got that number here. We had nine dollars left over, then we, then we add our financing. Sorry, this should have just been negative 22. Let's do that so that not to confuse anyone. We borrowed 22, we paid back 22, so all we end up with is nine left over. Here's the ending cash balance for quarter four is nine. Here's the ending balance for the year is nine. If, these, if you can get these two numbers to be equal, you know you've done the cash budget correctly. We're going to do exercise 9.8, preparing a flexible budget. Auto lavage, I believe, sounds French to me. Auto lavage is a Canadian company that owns and operates a large automatic car wash facility near Quebec. The following table provides data concerning the company's costs, and as you can see on the screen, that's what we're given uh, in the question, is data that looks like this. And we can see that we have two columns. We have our fixed cost per month, and here we have our cost per car washed, which is our variable cost per unit. The company expects to charge customers an average of $5.90 per car wash. Now that's critical. Listen to that. Let's read that again because I want you to pick up on that point. The company expects to charge customers an average of $5.90 per car washed. It's not charging customers $5.90 per car washed. It's charging an average of $5.90 per car wash. So sometimes when we read questions, we may think, well, these are rather naive questions because they assume a constant price all year long. It's not an assumption of a constant price. It's an assumption of an average price. I want you to be very clear on that distinction. It's not a constant price. It's an average price. Okay, let's continue on. Using Exhibit 9.3 as your guide, prepare a flexible budget for October, assuming either 8,000 or 9,000 cars are washed. So we're asked to do a flexible budget. And here it is right here. I've gone ahead and just uh, uh, done most of the uh, um, time-consuming work of just laying out what the flexible budget looks like. And I don't think it's difficult to do. You can do it on your own. Listen, it's, uh, it's very simple. It's sales less variable costs equals contribution margin less fixed costs equal operating income. So I think you can remember that. And we just have to look at the chart that we were given and notice that some of the variable costs uh, uh, had dollar, uh, sorry, that some of the costs given were variable and some of the costs given were fixed, with a couple of them being what are called mixed costs that have a fixed component and a variable component. So let's fill in our budgeted amount per unit. Remember, the sales were average of five dollars and ninety cents each for our cleaning supplies and I'm just entering this off the data we're given we were told that it was seventy cents per car washed for cleaning supplies we're told it was ten cents uh, per car washed or sorry for electricity I'm reading the wrong cleaning supplies seventy cents electricity ten cents maintenance we were told was thirty cents 
wages and salaries per car wash, we're told, was 40 cents. And uh, our administrative expense, we're told, was five cents. So we want our total variable expense. That's just a summation. We could just sum that, that row. And I just hit the sum function at the, the sigma function at the top of Excel. And we get $1.55. So we're ready to do our contribution margin, which is simply our sales minus our total variable expenses, which happens in cell H15. So there we go. There's our contribution margin. And we'll just uh, move over to our next cell. Now, we want to figure out what a budget would be if we did 8,000 units and if we did 9,000 units. So for this entire column, we'll multiply each of the variable amounts by $8,000. But we don't want to have to enter it in every single time. So remember uh, how we did that before. Remember how we made one cell stay constant. This is cell I7. So let's hit equals. We click on the cell we want to multiply. Multiplied by dollar sign I, dollar sign 7. Notice how it highlights the 8,000, how the cell gets highlighted right above. So we know that we've got the two correct cells that we're multiplying and we hit enter. Now, if we drag down the entire column, it should fill in automatically, including one that we don't need, but there was nothing there anyways. We could just eliminate what was in there. Now we want to do the same for the column with 9,000. We note that that is cell J. 7. So we will highlight 590, asterisk, dollar sign J, dollar sign 7. Make sure that the nine, the cell with 9,000 in it is highlighted, which it is now. Hit enter, and we can drag down the entire column and get rid of the extra one we don't need. There we go. Nice and simple. So the power of Excel again, right? So we want a summation. Well, this was a sum of these uh, uh, variable amounts. And we want the same thing to happen in every cell. So we just have to drag across. And there's our sum. So there's our total variable expenses. And for our contribution margin, we've already seen that, uh, that uh, we've already calculated it here. So we can drag straight across here and get a contribution margin. Except we don't want double lines down there. So let's get rid of those first. And we'll click on no border. There we go. Except I lost my single line now. Give me a second. Let me put that back in. Just for appearances, right? Now we're ready to do our fixed costs. So we have our contribution margin. Let's deal with our fixed costs. And what I've done was I've just itemized the amounts that were fixed. So electricity was $1,400. Wages and salaries were fixed at 47, or the fixed component of it was 47. Depreciation was 8,300. Rent was 2,100. Administrative expenses were 1,800. So there's our to there's our, uh, our uh, uh, column of our fixed costs. We can total that. I'll just hit the sigma um, function at the top, and we get 18,300. Well, these are all identical here. So we can just highlight this and drag this and we'll get the same. We'll just replicate it in the next cell. So our operating income will equal our contribution margin less our fixed expenses, which in this case is in cell I-23 for 16,500. And we can drag that across to the next cell for 20,850. So we can see that uh, uh, that was fairly easy to do when we did Excel. The difference between the 20,850 and the 16,500 is 4,350. We can ask ourselves, just to make sure we did it right, does that make sense? 4,350. Well, look at our contribution margin per unit is $4.35. Went from 8,000 units to 9,000 units, an increase of 1,000. Multiplied by the contribution margin is 4,350. We add 4,350 to 165. We get 20,850. We know we did it right. There we go. There's 9.8.